Hey everyone, this is Nick Dearbertis teaching you financial modeling. Today we're going to be talking about forecasting simple financial statements in Python using Fin Statement. This is part of our lecture series on free cash flow estimation and forecasting, which is part of a broader goal in the course of building out a full discounted cash flow valuation of a stock. So we uh, had just finished all the simple forecasting material in prior videos, and um, we had looked at examples of how to do simple time series forecasting, but now this is focusing on working with the entire financial statements in a forecast and using the fin statement package to smooth that process. So we can jump over to the example Jupyter Notebook, so um, the first thing that we'll do here is uh, load in the financial statements. Um, so we are going to um, create data frames from the CSV files that have the statements and then create the balance sheet income statements, uh, both from those data frames and then create the financial statements from the income statement and balance sheet. So since we've done that, uh, we can view the statements. Uh, so we see the income statement and all uh, the different periods of values. And we see the balance sheet also with uh, all the different periods of values. So um, we're gonna look at forecasting um, with a couple of different uh, configuration settings. Um, but here's a little aside to say, uh, it's often the case that you might wanna run multiple different forecasts. So if you know that's true, then you can make a copy of the statements to keep uh, any changes that you make to the configuration separate uh, so that you can run multiple completely separate forecasts. So here is how you would copy the statements into uh, additional uh, statements, which are now totally separate from the first. So now let's jump into forecasting. Um, so what we have um, in order to understand what assumptions are going into the forecast is this dot forecast assumptions uh, attribute on the financial statements object. So when you look at that as pandas data frame, of uh, basically each line item in the index and some details about how the forecast is going to be carried out. So the first column here is uh, the method. So you can choose among one of the available forecast methods um, in order to do the forecast and it defaults to the compounded annual growth rate but we can also choose to use the average approach, the recent value approach, or the trend uh, regression approach. Um, and when we get into looking at more complex time series, we'll see another approach which is helpful there as well. Um, and then the next column here is talking about, is this item forecasted as a percentage of another item? So you see here that revenue is not forecasted as a percentage of another item, it's forecasted standalone, but cost of goods sold is forecasted as a percentage of revenue. Um, and it has kind of the standard assumptions that you would normally see um, for forecasting items as a percentage of other items, uh, but you can adjust that further if needed. Um, and then next, um, we have cap and floor. That's in case you want to put uh, a minimum or a maximum on your forecasted values. Um, and then finally here we have plug, which is about balancing the balance sheet. So the library will automatically balance the balance sheet for you based off of the forecasts. Um, but in order to do that, it does have to avoid uh, forecasting uh, at least you know, one, one or two items. Uh, Typically, one on the assets, uh, one on the asset side, and one on the liability side. 
liabilities or equity side. Um, in order to balance the balance sheet based off your forecast, it has to manually adjust these values. Um, and so by default, cash um, and long-term debt are going to be the plug items. So if uh, the assets are too high from your initial forecast, it's going to increase the debt. Uh, and if the assets are too low, then it's going to increase the cash, basically. Um, but you can adjust which items are the plug should you want to directly forecast cash or directly forecast long-term debt and have something else uh, serve as the plug. So um, we can update this configuration um, using uh, the update method. So we, um, on the um, statements, we have this um, config and we can update that um, so we have update and update all um, here update all so all of these forecast assumptions are going to be under the forecast config so you pass first a list uh, where the first item will be forecast config um, and the second item will be which one of these that you want to update uh, so here, uh, method, and then uh, that list is the first argument, what you want to update, and then uh, the value you want to use to update it comes next. So this um, sets the compounded annual growth rate method for all the forecasts. Of course, we already have that. Uh, we could also set it to trend um, and see that come through on all the assumptions. Um, and you can also update a single item. Um, so to update a single item, then it's um, going to be a similar syntax and we'll see that here in a moment. But I'm gonna switch it back to the, the compounded annual growth rate method. So the way that we forecast, uh, once we have decided that our assumptions are good enough to run the forecast, then um, there's just a dot forecast method on the financial statements. Uh, and then you'll see some output go by. Um, and the warnings that you see here are about uh, the compounded annual growth rate not being an appropriate method for some of the items, basically the items which are at zero the entire time, it can't calculate a growth rate. Um, so you could set those to trend if the warnings bother you, otherwise it's just gonna remain at zero anyway. Um, and then we can look at the forecasted statements. So uh, by default, it's going to forecast uh, for five periods into the future. You are able to adjust that um, in the forecast arguments. Um, and then um, we have all of our forecasted statements here. But it can be a little difficult to see what happened just from the numbers. So there's also a plot method, which is going to show us <clears throat> all of the different forecast plots, which we can easily examine to understand what happened with the forecast. Um, so we can see the forecast for revenue. We can see that it forecasted cost of goods sold as a percentage of revenue and all these other line items as well. Um, so all that just kind of happened in the background for us. And now we have forecasts for everything. And uh, if you want to just look at a few plots, you can pass a subset to the plot method. Uh, so you don't have this huge output every time. So um, if you want to update particular items, you can use this syntax. So it's the same as the update all syntax, except we first put the name of the item that we want to update. Um, so this is going to set revenue uh, to the trend forecast method, and it's going to set uh, cost of goods sold to the mean forecast method. Um, so when we look at the um, forecast assumptions, uh, then we'll see that those have updated. Revenue is now trend. Cost of goods sold is now a mean, but still a percentage of revenue. 
Um, so then we can run the forecast again. And um, we will see the results here in a moment. It does take a little bit of time to balance the balance sheet. Um, and then we can look at the results that come out. Um, so we'll see now in contrast to before, uh, we can see that um, before the cost of goods sold was using a compound and annual growth rate approach. Um, and now it is at an average approach instead. Um, and same thing with the revenue compound and annual growth rate before, and now it is using a trend line approach. So um, then it's often the case that you don't just want to take kind of the baseline result that you get from the forecast. You may have some kind of qualitative information that you can use to adjust the forecast, such as some new project that you know is coming on for the company or some other change in the operations, which is not reflected in the historical information. So I built this into a library where we can adjust an existing forecast. Um, so after you've done the forecasts, then you can access uh, the forecast by uh, dot forecast and then the name of the statement item. And then you can convert it to a manual forecast where we just have fixed values for the forecast. Um, and as you're converting it to a manual forecast, then you can make adjustments or you can replace uh, different parts of that forecast. So, uh, and by default, it uh, works in growth rates, but you can also pass use levels equal true to work with the levels of the item. Um, so the um, first one here, we're adjusting cash and it's going to adjust uh, the first period, zero indexed period, um, to increase the growth by 40% in that period. The second example here um, is on the levels instead of on the growth rate, and it's going to replace uh, each of the <clears throat> values for the cost of goods sold as a percentage of sales forecasts with 85%. And then this last one on the revenue, um, again, on the levels, and it's going to replace the second period value with uh, $80 billion. So I do that and then uh, run the forecast again, and we'll look at the results that come out. Um, so we have um, now, in the revenue, we see that that second forecast period was replaced by uh, 80 billion. And the cost of goods sold as a percentage of revenue, we see that now it's flatlined at 85% instead. Um, and in the cash, uh, we see that we have an additional uh, bump at the beginning uh, of a 40% growth uh, for the first period. So, um, and then when we look at the forecast assumptions there, um, we see all these things that we've done. So revenue, cost of goods sold, and cash got converted to manual forecasts. And now um, it specifies what values are just basically hard-coded into the forecast. Um, and we see all our other forecast assumptions there. Um, but we made that copy of the statements at the beginning because we might want to do another forecast. And we look at that one, and we see that none of the assumptions have been touched. So that's why we did the copy before going and modifying the assumptions. That way we have a totally clean set of assumptions now that we can go and run a completely separate forecast. So that's a quick overview on using Fin Statement to do financial statement forecasting. Uh, we'll have another video where we look at uh, forecasting complex time series in financial statements, also using Fin Statement. So thanks for listening, and see you next time.